54 years of open era tennis. 218 slams contested so far, yet only eight players have won slams before their 20th birthday in men's tennis. Of these teenagers, who had the greatest title run? Let's find out. Bjorn Borg. Borg was the first ever to do it in the open era. Back in 1974, he won the title at Roland Garros in a sensational fashion. He had joined the professional circuit only a year earlier, reached a few ATP finals in the same year, and finished as world number 18 at the end of 1973. Prior to the 74 French Open, Borg made a statement by winning ATP titles at Auckland, London, and Sao Paulo before winning the Italian Open. As a result, many knew that he had a shot in the French Open, slam, despite being only 17. Back then, the first two rounds were played as best of three sets, while the remaining rounds were best of five. The third seed breezed past unseeded opponents in the first three rounds before meeting an irrepressible Van Dillen in the fourth round. A crazy five-setter, Borg was smoked six love in the first set before storming back to win the next two sets. Van Dillen won the next set before Borg edged him in the final set. He made it to the quarterfinals. This time, he met a ninth seed Ramirez who dragged him into another epic five-set thriller. Borg showed exceptional mental strength and stamina to make it to the semis. He beat an unseeded Harold Solomon in four sets to set up a date with Manuel Orantes in the finals. Orantes won the first two sets, 6-2, 7-6, and Borg looked all but defeated. However, the Swede brought something different in the third set. He started to play a lot better, and Orantes' game only got worse. 6-love, six 6-1, one, six one, and Borg had the title in the bag and became the youngest ever Roland Garros champion at 18 years and 10 days. Borg defended his title in a more dominant run the following year, but another Swede would take up the challenge eight years later. Mats Verlander Verlander won the 1982 French Open title. Four-time defending champion Borg was ruled out because he had not played enough tournaments to qualify and world number one John McEnroe was out with an ankle injury. Still, the 17-year-old Verlander wasn't expected to come anywhere close to the title. An unseeded, unrecognized player, he upset second seeder Van Lendl in the fourth round in five sets. Entering the quarterfinal, he met fifth seed Vitas Garuliatis and won in four sets. Verlander has now become a dark horse for the title. He met fourth seed Jose Luis Clerc in the semis and came out on top after another four sets. He showed his sportsmanship by requesting a replay of the match point after his opponent made a forehand that was called long. At the final, Verlanda met third seed Argentine Guillermo Villas. It was a four hour, 42 minute marathon. Verlanda was embarrassed with a breadstick in the first set. Villas was a bit unlucky to lose the tiebreak in the second set. In the third set, Verlanda returned the favor from the first set and gave Villas a bagel before closing the game out in four sets. 1-6, 7-6, 6 love, 6-4. Verlanda had become the youngest ever French Open winner in a final that saw wild swings in momentum between players. It was Verlanda's first ATP Tour level title and he created history at 17 years, 293 days. Before he turned 20, he also became the youngest player to win the Australian Open title. Quite impressive, right? But an even younger teenager rewrote the history books three years later. Boris Becker. Becker became the youngest male Wimbledon winner of all time when he won the title as a 17 year old in 1985. Like Verlander, Becker was also an unseeded player. He met Kevin Curran in the final. Curran was smoking hot and had annihilated Stefan Edberg McEnroe and Jimmy Connors on his way to the final. Becker, on the other hand, had lost a set in the first round and had gone the distance against seeded players in the third and fourth rounds. He did four sets against tough opposition in the quarters and semis. The final came and it brought all the fireworks. It was a close four sets. Becker took the first 6-3, but Curran leveled up by winning the tiebreak in the second set. Becker returned the favor to win the tiebreak in the third before breaking Curran in the fourth to win 6-4. The match was intense. Becker sent several hostile glares to Curran in between points and even bumped Curran's shoulder as they passed one another during one of the final changeovers. Becker became the first unseeded player to claim a Wimbledon men's single title, doing so at 17 years, 7 months, and 15 days. He went on to defend his title the following year. Stefan Edberg Looks like the 80s tennis was the real deal, and the Swedes weren't messing around. Another Swede, Edberg, won the Australian Open on December 9th, 1985, 40 days before his 20th birthday. Unlike the other players so far, the prodigy Edberg had already made some name for himself. Two years earlier, he'd become the first and only player so far to achieve the Junior Grand Slam in the Open era by winning all four slam titles in 1983 before turning pro later that year. Edberg defeated his compatriot and two-time defending champion Mats Verlander in the only all-Swedish final so far. The tournament was played on grass. 
19-year-old Edberg had received a first-round bye as the fifth seed. He saw off two unseeded Americans in the second and third rounds. The third round was a tight four-setter, however. In the fourth round, he was nearly upset. Two sets down, he needed a tiebreak to take the set in third against home player Wally Massa. He breezed past Schaffers in the quarterfinal to set up a crunch match with world number one Ivan Lendl in the semifinal. An epic five-setter played over two days due to rain interruption. Edberg won 6-7, 7-5, 6-1, 4-6, 9-7. In the final, Edberg trumped Verlander, who had defeated him in their last three meetings and four times in their previous five. Although Verlander didn't play so badly, it ended up becoming a one-sided final. Edberg put on a scintillating show and never let Verlander settle into the game. 6-4, 6-3, 6-3, and Edberg took his maiden slam. The golden 80s was coming to an end, but not before another teenager joined the elite club. Michael Chang. Michael Chang won the title at Roland Garros at 17 years, 110 days, and he remains as the youngest ever slam winner. He defeated Edberg 6-1, 3-6, 4-6, 6-4, 6-2 -6 in the final. As impressive as this was, it wasn't the highlight of Chang's title run. A diminutive player, the 15th seed at Roland Garros did the impossible. First, Chang thrashed Pete Sampras in the second round before meeting world number one and defending champion Ivan Lendl in the fourth round. The match lasted 4 hours and 37 minutes. Two sets down, Chang continued to show his doggedness and it paid dividends as he leveled up in the fourth set. The American then suffered cramps and was even forced to serve underarm and hit balls high into the sky just to buy himself some time. It was a rather emotional sight to behold. Chang prevailed and went on to play tight four setters in the quarterfinal and semifinal before beating Edberg in the final. What a title run! But that's not all the 90s had to offer us. Pete Sampras after Chang, fans didn't have to wait long to see another teenager create magic. The following year, Sampras was 12th seed at the US Open. He hadn't played in the French Open that year and was dumped in the first round at Wimby for the second year in a row. Sampras faced little resistance in the first few rounds. In the fourth, he upset sixth seed Thomas Muster in four sets. Eyes rolled, but he showed it was no fluke by defeating Ivan Lendl in five sets in the quarters. The introverted Sampras defeated McEnroe in the semifinal to set up a final with fourth seed Andre Agassi who had ousted defending champion Becker in the semis. The final came and it was a match between arguably the biggest server and the best returner of their time. An irresistible force against an immovable object. Upcoming 19-year-old Sampras against a more established 20-year-old Agassi. Agassi was the favourite, but Sampras destroyed him in 1 hour and 42 minutes to win the title and become the youngest ever US Open winner to date at 19 years and 28 days. Rafael Nadal It took another 15 years to see the next teen wonder at a slam. Nadal produced one of the most dominant slam performances shown by any teenager. Coming into Roland Garros, he had dominated the clay court season, winning titles at the Barcelona Open, Monte Carlo Masters, and the Italian Open. As a result, he already became the world number five and a huge favorite to win the French Open despite being a debutante. He didn't disappoint. He breezed past opponents, including fellow teenager Richard Gasquet in the early rounds and met David Ferrer in the quarterfinal, whom he had no trouble dispatching in straight sets. On his 19th birthday, Nadal defeated top seed Federer in the semi-final in a keenly contested four-set match. In the final, he met relatively unknown Mariana Puerta, and although he lost the first set, he won the remaining with relative ease. 6-7, 6-3, 6-1, 7-5. He was 19 years and three days old. Safe to say, he could have even done it a year earlier if not for injuries. The thing is, he wasn't the only Spaniard to achieve this accomplishment. Carlos Alcaraz. Despite the talented crop of players seen on tour, it took another 17 years for another team to step up to the challenge. Alcaraz, who was still an infant when Nadal was winning his first of 14 French Open titles, followed the footsteps of his compatriot in his US Open title run. Alcaraz won the US Open two months ago, just two years after his ATP debut in 2020. Alcaraz was seeded third following a remarkable 2022 that saw him claim two Masters 1000 trophies. Arguably the best player of the decade, Novak Djokovic didn't feature in the tournament and Rafael Nadal saw an early exit. Defending champion Medvedev was dumped in the fourth round. Still, many fancied Nick Kyrgios ahead of Alcaraz. Alcaraz survived a five-set thriller against Marin Cilic before saving match points in another epic five-setter against Sinner in the quarterfinal. Alcaraz played third consecutive five sets against TFO in the semis. By the time he got to the final, everyone feared that fatigue would ruin his game, but he outclassed Kaspar Ruud to win in four sets. Alcaraz spent the most time on the court, needing 23 hours and 39 minutes to win his maiden slam at 19 years and 129 days. So, which teen had the best run? Hmm, 
Pretty tough call. It's hard to say who impressed the most, but we are going to consider a couple factors. Age isn't just a number. In tennis, a single year in development can make all the difference. Chang, Becker, Belanda did it at 17, while Borg was just a few days into his 18th birthday. The others, Nadal, Sampras, Alcaraz, and Edberg were all 19 when they won their first slams. Going by age alone, we could say Chang, Becker, and Volander impressed the most. Repeat performances. Borg, Volander, and Becker all won two slams before turning 20. Borg and Becker defended their first slams as teens, which only makes their title runs more impressive. Edberg and Nadal defended their titles as well, although they were already past their teenage years, while Chang never won another slam. Volander beat four top five seeds in a row, including Lendl and Vilas in his title run. Chang beat Lendl and Edberg in tough five setters who were number one and three seeds respectively. He also beat an upcoming Sampras. Becker beat the seventh and eighth seeds in his run and was on the brink of a loss twice. Edberg beat world number one Lendl and dominated two-time defending champion Volander in the final. Borg only faced one top 10 seed in his title run, but came back from two sets down to win the final. Sampras beat Lendl, McEnroe and Agassi on his way to the crown. Nadal beat Federer, who is entering his prime. He also thrashed Richard Gasquet and David Ferrer. Alcaraz got past Cilic, Sinner and Rude. He played three straight five setters and a tight four set final. In terms of opposition caliber, Volander, Chang, Edberg and probably Sampras have the edge, but we can't rule out Nadal who beat prime Federer. Playing style, Edberg and Becker were elegant serve and volleyers. Sampras had his huge serve and all court game. Nadal, Borg and Volander punishing baseliners who hit heavy topspin. Agassi was the best returner, while Alcaraz had his aggressive forehand and all court game to thank. We can't say any style is superior due to the peculiarities of the different decades. Expectations Even as teens, Nadal, Borg and Alcaraz were already among the favourites. Nadal probably had the most dominant run. The most surprising runs were probably Volanda, Chang and Sampras. There are many angles to look at things from. I imagine fans are going to be at loggerheads on who had the greatest title run. For me, it's very hard to separate Chang, Becker and Volanda. They occupy my top three spots in that order. These dudes came out of nowhere. By the way, Volander's run appears to be extremely underrated. I will probably give the next two slots to Sampras and Ball. Take nothing from the rest. These players have written some of the most beautiful tennis stories with their title runs. It might take another decade to see the next team. Meanwhile, let's see how good a career one of these players had in the next video.